right? I recording this call. So if you guys are in the takeover signals, if you are using the harmonic scanner, if you're using boy pits, even if you're using swipe trays, any of the um, any of the add-ons that you may be using that's part of iMarkets Live, always try to use or stick to one strategy, right? Stick to one strategy. Because you guys might be really you you guys may actually realize, or you may not, that every signal that you get right all you need is a strategy you don't need to use the person's strategy that they're using you know if you have your own strategy you could receive a signal from anybody and then it's down to you to use your strategy to confirm that the trade is definitely going in that direction so try not to implement lazy trading because sometimes we get signals and we say okay well for example i've seen some people using boy pits and he would say, okay, looking for an entry here, and this is my take profit points, and you just enter the trade without doing anything because, you know, he may have had a couple of successes or whatever, so you get lazy with it, and you just enter in the trade. It's, it goes for everything in life. Try not to be lazy when you have work to be done, right? So with trading, try not to be lazy, you know what I mean? Use the strategy with your confirmation. Do not rush your trade. The trade will get there, right? Do not rush your trade. It's part of growth, right? We creep first before we walk. So just be patient. The reason why a lot of persons are actually making a lot of money in this market is because they understand this. They stick to one strategy and they wait until they get their confirmations, right? So let's go straight into bounce back. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to minimize this. You're welcome, Paula. And there we are. Good. So, bounce back trade, right? So, you guys, by now, if you're new and you don't know the strategy, I will run, over, run through the strategy now again. However, um, you guys should know the strategy by now. And every time I do a bounce back call, it should just be practice. That's all. It should be practice or it should be, you know what, I was unsure about this trade. Let me jump on to coach call because coach will confirm what she thinks about this trade. If she thinks it's going to go in this direction and so on, right? And I want to touch another point on that and say to you guys that when somebody tells you that a trade is going to definitely go into a buy or, you know, due to their projections or due to, you know, their analysis that they've done. I can tell you something right now. Nobody can tell you that a trade is definitely going to go into a buy or sell. I'm telling you right now, nobody, right? The market does what it wants to do. The market can fake you out in any direction. It, you can get a confirmation and the market fakes you out. So the best thing to do is always, always, always do your analysis regardless of, you know, how good that person may be. So let's go to bounce back. We got buy on USD JPY around 108.583 on time frame 60 minute, right? So we know the rules, 108.583. Show that draw on my screen. Jeez. Thank you. All right, so USD JPY. 108.583, right? 108.583. So the first thing we're going to do is identify where 108.583 is by using a horizontal ray, placing it anywhere on the chart, 108.583, and changing the coordinates, right? Any settings for the horizontal ray for those who are new. So we're looking for a buy on USDJPY around this point, all right? Now, that got called on the one hour time frame. So the first thing we want to do is drop two time frames, identify the trend. Now we can see how it was a downtrend and actually boxing in between two areas right now. But we're going to draw the trend line coming from the highest high 
all the way down to where price currently is. All right? So everybody should be able to identify what's happening here. Right? Now we're looking for a buy. And our confirmations, right? If you were on my previous calls or you watch my, uh, my videos on YouTube, right? Our confirmations are the first thing we need is for the break of the trend line, right? I'm not getting a break as yet, but it looks close. Even if it breaks the trend line, we can see that it's ranging right now. Everything is flat, right? So what do I want to see? I want to see price not only breaking my trend line, but breaking above my 50 moving average line that you can see here in blue, right? Now, right now, price is under my 50 moving average line. So I do not have confirmation that my trade is ready for the buy. It has not broken my trend line. It has not broken my 50 moving average line, right? And as you can see, the MACD is also showing flat, right? Now, if you guys are not aware, these trades tend to start to get a little momentum during the agent session. So anytime tonight around, you know, let's see what time it is now, probably around 9, 10 o'clock or so, then you should start to see some momentum in these trades, right? But try not to trade, especially sometimes we get some bounce back trades and it may have broken our trend line. But if you actually don't identify the structure of the trade, and by structure, I mean, if you look left and notice, all right, this actually brought my trend line, but it's still within this range, right? Let's identify the range. Right? Still within my range. This is the range. So the trade could actually break the trend line because it's flat. So it will continue to the right hand side until it builds up momentum. You don't just want to enter into the trade. That's why I added the 50 moving average line. The reason for the 50 moving average line is so that we can identify that the trade is now really getting to move into the direction we want it to move into. But right now, this is still showing me that it could possibly sell. Right? So even if this breaks the trend line, you need it ultimately to break this area here, this range. So it needs to break above this range, right? Which would then confirm it breaking above the 50 moving average line as well. And that's key, that's important. So if you don't have that, make sure that you're making notes on what you should be looking for for your confirmation of your trades, right? It's key that you identify if the trade is actually ranging. Right? When the 50 moving average line or any moving average line is showing flat, it means that the trade is actually not healthy. The trend is not healthy. It's not a healthy trend. Right? So you guys can make note of that as well. All of these are things that you need to do in your analysis. When you see that the MACD lines are flat and the 50 moving average lines are flat, right? It suggests that the trade is not trending, it's not healthy. So therefore you should not be entering into it, right? If you are using bounce back on your phone and you're doing your analysis on your phone, you're, you're, you're doing the wrong thing. Right? So you should not be trading bounce back on your phone. You need a big screen that you can see, you should be able to identify, look, this here is ranging at the moment. My lines are flat. My, the lines are tangled up into each other and showing flat. And this is what I need to see, right? Because as you can see, new candle form and we are still going sideways. All right, so put this on your watch list so you guys can make note of this. Put this on your watch list, right? And you guys could actually replicate everything that I have here so you know the area that you need to see it breaking out of. Right? The area that you see it breaking out of so you will know where to enter the trade. Um, when the trade has broken out of this range, your stop loss is going to be here. Right? That's your stop loss. 
We're having a red, which is 108539. 108539. Right? Your take profit. To be honest, if you're doing a quick trade for my five pip crew, I have a crew that love five pips. You could go back to the top of this resistance level here. Right? Where my five pip crew at? So make it green. So for my five pit crew, you could come out here. Um, ultimately, we're looking to come out around here. Right? This is ultimately TP1 and then TP2. If it does get back up to this high, this will be TP2. Right? So that's the take profit points. Right? TP1. Right, and TP2. And cannot forget five pit crew. Right, <laughs> my five pit crew. Good. So, this is a trade, this is the analysis here for USD JPY. All right, so you guys could take a picture of that. I'm about to shift the screen and go to the next trade. Coach, can you show me again how you drew your zone? What did you look for? I'll show you in another, another one. Um, that's Shanice. I'm going to show you in the next one. All right, buy on Euro CH. I'm going to do this one here. Don't mind that it was yesterday. All right, buy on Euro CH. Actually, you know what? Straight to buy pips because he did a buy on Euro CH today. So for those who, um, for those who don't know how to get to um, buy pips signals, right? It's just over here, this little light bulb. So that's all you need to click and it comes up here. Now, I'm thinking about your buy on your CHF around 1.10490, right? On each one time frame. Your potential profit, so he has take profit one, two, and three. And then he has um, a stop loss as well, right? And the note suggests that there's a bullish flag forming on H1. Look for continuation up. Right, move stop loss after 10 pips. So when you guys see things like this, you should already have your notepad, your trading journal, whatever, and you should be making the key notes out of this entire idea that he has here. What are the key notes? We're looking for a buy. So all you need to write down is buy on your CHF, right? Around 1.10490, right? And next to that, put H1. So you know what time frame it is on right? Your notes, because in your journal, you should always be able to look back and see why something may have hit take profit or why it hit stop loss, right? In your notes, under it, you should just put bullish flag farming, right? You should put bullish flag farming. And now we can then do our analysis. So we're going to Euro CHF. I think I had drawn up this trade today. All right. So your CHF, and this is the one on nine, sorry, the one point one zero four nine zero. So this is the entry here that he's looking at, right? Right. So this entire move, what can we see? We can see an impulse, and this entire move that you're seeing here is a kind of bullish flag forming. Although this is a reversal pattern. Right? Although this is a reversal pattern, the whole thing still shows a bullish flag, right? Continuation to the upside. I'm looking for it as well. Now, when we see something like this, right? His first take profit point is actually above here, where you see this green, because they had looked at it today, right? His first take profit point is up here. 
Now let's go to the tape profit point. Actually identify why would he have chosen here? Now all you're doing, this is why you is key to understand structure, all right? All you're doing is looking left and looking for the next resistance level, right? So you can clearly see, you can clearly see that this entire area here is the next resistance level. So this is where your this is where your tape profit will be. Right? This is where your tape profit will be. So that's what he would have chosen here, state profit one. Obviously, um, obviously, there are other tape profit points as well, but I love when the team just focus on one TP and not get too greedy. Right? If you don't know about if you don't know how to trail your stop loss, then keep it to one tape profit point. All right. So let's go here. Now we're looking for this buy. I don't want you to just enter into buy pits, buys like that. I want you to draw a trend line the same way. Right? So we're going to draw a trend line. And that's the trend line that I have drawn. Right? No. If I wanted to get into this trade, it needs to break the range. So Shanice asked me to identify the range, right? This is the range here for me. Let me, let me change the color. Right? This is the zone. All of this is a reversal zone because it could break this flag right now and just go a little ways up and then reverse. So if you have not properly identified your reversal zone, then you in shambles, right? You will get caught in a reverse, in, in, a, in the trade going the opposite direction. So in this case, if I want to enter this trade, either way, confirmations are, needs to break my trend line, is already above my 50 moving average line, which is good. So we have one thing going for us so far, right? And we want the MACD to also line up with it, right? Now, with this trade, I would, I would enter on the 15-minute time frame. I rarely tend to enter trades now on the five-minute time frame, and that's because so much noise is on the five-minute time frame. I don't know if any of you agree. Paula, I don't know what your thoughts about that. Um, I love a 15 minute time frame because I know that is, you know, I get a more steady entry. The trade is, is steady at that, at that time frame, right? Five minute time frame, too much noise for me, right? So I'm looking to enter this trade on the 15 minute time frame. I want to see it break this zone. So anything above here, I'm good. If you guys want to set a, a, um, a uh, buy stop order lost my thought there just now if you want to set a buy stop order make sure that you put it above the range right so anywhere around 110 560 is good right because then you would actually be above this range right anything above 110 560 is good your stop loss right your stop loss could be anywhere wrong here, right? As the trade breaks higher, you could actually bring the stop loss up, right? So this is the boy pips. This is what we're looking for, right? Your CHF, I'm actually looking for this to buy. So you guys could actually replicate what I have here, draw the trend line that I have, right? This is the entry zone he was looking at. However, you can see how it's actually flat arranging in this area right now right you can see there's a lot of rejection happening here right now so we want to see that break above the zone and then we're good all right so you guys could catch that let's see what time we have here all right i'll do one more So today he said he was looking for a buy on CAD JPY. I know this already started to move, but we're going we're gonna to look at it anyway. Um, so a buy on CAD JPY around 82,450, 
right? On time frame, 15 minutes. And the potential profit points, he listed there, the stop loss, he only has one profit point in this, in this case. And um, his notes were, that is a harmonic divergence. That's why sometimes too, it's good to um, still pay attention to trading. It might, some styles might not be your trading style, but at least you should know. Because when people start to talk about things like divergence and you're new or you know you've been in this game for a while, but you still don't know some terminology, it's still good to have them. I'm not telling you guys that you have to go and learn it in great detail to actually implement it in your strategy because you may love your strategy, but at least know so that if somebody calls a signal, you could go and look and see, oh, there's a divergence that they're seeing, right? So let's go to it. So buy on cat JPY around 10, sorry, around 82,450. 82,450. All right, so let's identify 82.450. There we are. This was a very profitable trade today. So anybody that took this trade today, well done. Um, and his profit point was um, 82.600. So let me just identify where that would have been, 82.600. There we are. No, they don't move. Right? So it hit to your profit today. So if you were in this trade, well then. Patience, huh? Good. So in this trade, if we want to get into this trade, let me block it out. Might help. So we could do our analysis properly. So let's block out this. There we go. Right? I'm gonna actually bring it around just a little bit to about here. Good. So if we were looking at this trade, he called a buy on CAD JPY. Right? No, he was suggesting that he's seeing some divergence. So the first thing we want to identify is what is divergence and how can I identify divergence? I'm not going to go into that topic so much tonight because we don't have a lot of time left, but you can identify divergence using the volume. So the histogram here on the MACD, right? So all you need to do is, for example, these two bottoms, I would identify the two bottoms on the MACD. So if you're looking at multi, if you're looking at valleys, we're using basically the valleys here on the MACD. And if you're looking at mountain tops, then we're using the mountain tops on the MACD. That's baby language, right? So everybody can understand, right? I want everybody to be with me. So divergence means that the trade itself has to be, the valleys have to be running in a different direction than the valleys on the histogram here on the MACD, right? So what I mean by that is if I had to take a trend line, I notice that these two valleys are coming down, right? But these two valleys here are going up. That's divergence, it's in the opposite direction. If you understand that, type I in the chat box. If you understand that, type A. It's not that complicated. We're just looking for opposite. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Right. So it's not difficult. Divergence, you're using either the valleys. So if you're looking for trade to buy, you're measuring the valleys. If you're looking for trade to sell, you're measuring the mountain tops. Right, so put that in your notes. If you're looking for trade to buy, you're measuring the valleys to look for divergence. If you're looking for trade to sell, 
then you're measuring the molten top. So let's see if I can find one for the molten top. Um, let me just, give me two seconds. Let me just see if I could give you guys a really good example. This should be one here. Here, right? So above here, before this trade went, it's a huge cell, right? We had divergence. So remember, if we're looking for cell, we're measuring the molten tops. So anywhere on the molten top, you could come from here. You notice that the trade is going up. So from this molten top all the way up here, it's showing that the trade is going up, right? If you measure on the MACD, this molten top, to the same area that you would have measured on the chart, notice that the divergence, you can actually see the divergence where it's running in opposite direction than what is being showed on the chart. And that, my friends, would have identified to you that the trade is going to turn around. All right? So everybody understand the molten top one as well? If so, type A. Real simple. We don't need to complicate this thing. Perfect, 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 perfect. Good. So he mentioned that he can see divergence, right? Divergence, got 10 minutes, that was all right. So he can see divergence here. This is the divergence he was seeing, right? We had divergence where it was running in the opposite direction. And then as you can see, the trail started to, um, you know, go up into the buy. No, the other thing, what you would have done to look for your entry would have been you would have drawn your trend line, right? So you could have drawn your trend line, wait for it to break. Let me take out this screen. Wait for it to break your 50 moving average line, which you could see the trade actually brought your, your 50 moving average line around here, right? So we have the divergence that he mentioned. So we can confirm that we are seeing what he's seeing. The trade brought our trend line and then it broke above our 50 moving average line. What else happened as well? Look at this, All right? MACD crossover, right? So there, for this particular trade that would have hit take profit today, right? We have all confirmations, all. It was an excellent trade, that's the truth. Excellent trade. All right, so hopefully you guys understood what it is I talked about today. Now, as I mentioned to you, Boy, boy Pitts might be using something completely different, a different strategy. Anybody could be using a different strategy. But what I have showed you today is that if you love your strategy, if you have a strategy, stick to it. All you need for the signals, right, is just to use your strategy for your own confirmation and then jump into the trade once you have your confirmations lined up. Don't let anyone come and tell you, yeah, market execute, no. You market execute when you have your confirmations down pat, right? And you will notice that if you use your strategy with someone else, signal or their strategy or their projection, you're actually more profitable because that's about three or four people that confirm something based on their analysis and you're confirming it as well. Double confirmation. It doesn't get any sweeter than that. All right, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed tonight's comeback session because I, I have returned, right? I have returned. So hopefully you guys enjoyed tonight, and I look forward to seeing you guys on Thursday, 7 p.m., when I bring more value. Make sure that you share it to the team so that we can have Zoom filled up. I want to get this Zoom levels up to 100 right? Because more people need to be making more money, man. All right. So guys, see you 7 p.m. on Thursday and have a pitful weekend.